My question is, um, I've been working on, uh, my issue has been uh, uh, creating and not documenting. So I recently, as of like the last couple of days, just worked on like doing uh, Instagram and YouTube covers, like posting them on a regular, just so that people can have new content to come to my page. But um, my question is, I'm uh, trying to get into the college market as an artist, and I'm a black guy, an R&B artist, but I also do pop, so it's a little struggle for me. Things where I've traveled overseas and performed, um, it's a struggle for me to be identified as, some people want to put me in a category of just an R&B, like a John Legend, but I'm really more so of like a Jason Derulo, Chris Brown. I can do both equally. So what I recently started doing was I uh, started, uh, I watched, I think, episode 139, we talked about DMing people, and I basically have been going to every student government uh, college, you know, every student government president, and basically DMing them about, yes. like, you know, events that they have coming and things like that. And how's that of going? Of course, not really well. I know you said uh, maybe one out of 900, so... I'm trying to be consistent with it, but my question is, I have two questions. My first question is, because I am naturally a versatile artist, I'm naturally r and I'm naturally pop, do I need to um, just be an R&B artist for now so that people can uh, kind of categorize me and, and be more familiar with me? Or should I be who I am and be the international pop R&B EDM artist that I am? And my other question Hold on, let's, let's get John to answer that one and then we'll go to the second one. Well, I think because I don't, I think there's already a model out there for the type of artist that you want to be, so I don't feel like there's a limit on you uh, uh, going out there and saying this is who I am. Like, some of our biggest pop stars are people who are black and also make R&B, like Chris Brown, uh, yeah, but- uh, Beyonce, Rihanna. Like, these, these people are, like, hugely successful uh, doing exactly what you say you want to do. And so I don't, feel like there, I don't feel like there's any limit on you doing those things because there's a model out there of, of successful artists that have done that. So I don't think it's a hard thing for you to convince someone, hey, I can make R&B and pop and dance music. Like, like you said, dance. there's Jason, there's Chris, there's Beyonce, there's Rihanna. All these people <laughs> make kind of those hybrids uh, uh, of music. And so there, I don't think there's anything holding you back uh, in, in people's perception of what black artists but can do. About- the thing about that is I'm gonna cut you off, but I feel like on on an independent artist level, mm-hmm. um, like it's easier to look at Beyonce, Chris, uh, a lot of those more versatile artists. But on an independent level, most R and B uh, or most black artists are just like soul. Like they don't. Sure, I can't, but, I, yeah, but you also have to understand. Like also have to understand that what. Uh, those artists have access to when it comes to production and songwriters uh, is a little bit different. So these people are working with the biggest pop producers on earth. They're working with the biggest pop songwriters on earth. And so uh, it's a whole enterprise that goes into making the, 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 uh, the music they make. And so you may not be able to make all that music on your own. Uh, so you might want to find an alliance with a producer that can help you do that. Uh, my alliance is... My alliance was with Kanye West when we were both not famous, um, and uh, that was a good idea. That was a pretty good idea. <laughs> 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 but 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 I, a lot of those types of artists that you're talking about are very producer driven, and so if you are also a producer, that's amazing. But if you're not, you might want to collaborate with someone that can help you do that. And Jemai, just listen, and this is coming from the deep, deep part of my heart. You're in excuse mode right now, my man. Like you're like. Like you're looking for the angle to why not. Like I, nothing you said isn't feasible and isn't happening. You're just, you're coming up with the reason it's not happening instead of just focusing on the things you need to do to make it happen. You excited the crap out of me when you said you've been DMing you know, uh, schools and college produ- people that are producing the events. Now my question but, is, and I, I, yeah of course, you can say anything. I just, I just wanted to, I think, um, I think he misunderstood my, basically what I'm saying is, I have like music, I have the production, but as far as the market is concerned for independent artists, like the, the venues and things like that, like when I bring my, my dancers with me, like I already have that, I have dancers, I have uh, all those different things, I have the music, the product, but when I go, it's like the, the audiences 
are not accepting. And I am really good, but the audiences are like, because of my look, it's like too far to the left. Or, you know, I might wear a fucking latex costume. I think, yo, my man. I think you have to, uh, you have to get the audience before they see you at the show. Because if you are creating, you're creating these recordings and, and you're publishing them somehow online, you're going to start to develop a fan base if people like you. And then that way, when people come see your show, they've already listened to the songs a few times. They're not, they've already bought into who you are as a, as a, as a persona and the way you dress and all those things because they've seen it on your Instagram. They've seen it on your Instagram page. So you can't just cold call all of these uh, producers and say, come let me perform at your show when no one at the school knows my music yet. You want to get your music out there so that uh, when you show up, You've already got a, a base. You've already got people that are like, oh, I've followed this person for a year and, and I really like them and I know some of the words to some of his songs and uh, so Gary, I connect this, with them. What is it, Pick Up Before the Age? Because that's where I'm trying to get into. I'm trying to get into the market, but I don't have the following necessarily. Well, that's because you're, bl- Jamal, my man, you're blaming the market. Right? You're like, they're not, they're, not, they're not seeing it, they're not feeling it, I'm too far to the left. Any artist that blames the audience already lost. Yeah, I think John, the is I'll, cool. t- I'll tell you this, you need to put out more music on SoundCloud. You should put out, a, how, much, how much music do you have? Like how many songs you got? That goes into my second question. I have, I have uh, music on iTunes, I got a few mixtapes and I, I've been doing it often, I do uh, covers, like yep. official covers. Yep. Um, but my my question was about the songs. Was like I have one song that I truly believe in, um, like wholeheartedly, and I just feel like because I'm so versatile, should I push the one song or should I have multiple songs that I push? You, hey, so that I might, push you saw you saw marks? you saw the you saw the piece of content where I was hanging out with Kyle. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. All right, I'm gonna link it in this episode. You need to watch it. You need to put out music, man. The big advantage now of distribution online is you need at-bats. Don't fall in love with that song. You may love it, the world may, may hate it. You need to put out music. Okay. You need to put out music. Put it out, man, and if people love it, it'll start to generate some buzz. Like, people will listen to it, they'll t- share it with their friends, and you'll start what to get have, more views. What if I don't have the money to put out music as often as I would like to, like quality sound and music? Then, then, then you're stuck and you lost like everybody else. You need to figure it out. Like Prince was a janitor in his studio and, and the so quality cheap now, to make music yeah. now, like the, the money should not be a problem. Jamai, listen man. It's really I, cheap to I, make music. I love you and I'm trying to be kind because John's here. Everything you're saying is backwards. You need to do and work. You're coming up with all the wrong angles in my opinion and I'm so pumped you called because I'm hoping that this is the breakthrough moment. Like you need to, so far I heard it's the audience's fault, it's, it's too far to the left, the music's too expensive. You are fully, fully in excuse mode. You can put out plenty of quality music to John's point, it's inexpensive. And if you want it so bad, go fucking work at the studio in exchange for studio time. Like you need to go out and put out music, put in the work, put your head down, and then figure it out after the fact. You need to put out 150 fucking songs and see how people react to it before before we hear another phone call from you. Bet, got you. Let's do it. Thank you. I believe in you.